Hello, I'm Jonathan Kay from UMass Chan Medical School in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm here at ACR Convergence 2023 with Professor Joseph Smolin from the Medical University of Vienna. And we're here to talk about Professor Smolin's poster, which was presented today looking at a post hoc analysis of the Accelerate trial. This trial compared adalimumab with sertolizumab pegol in patients with rheumatoid arthritis, and all of the outcome measures were superimposable in terms of efficacy. However, in this post hoc analysis, he uh, looked at patients in terms of the rheumatoid factor concentration and found that sertolizumab pegol, which lacks an FC domain, differed from adalimumab in terms of efficacy in patients with high titer rheumatoid factor. So, Joseph, tell us a little bit more about this study. Well, there were already hypotheses that high titer rheumatoid factor may interfere with the efficacy of monoclonal antibodies to various targets because rheumatoid factor binds the FC. And here we had this opportunity because, as you mentioned, the head-to-head -head trial accelerate to really compare the two drugs. And when we did tertile by levels of rheumatoid factor, the top tertile, which was about 200 and more, compared with the two-thirds that had less than 200 units per ml, behaved differently. Now, in which respects did it behave differently? Firstly, the concentrations of the drug sertolizumab were not affected by rheumatoid factor, whereas they were affected for adalimumab. Not by much, but by about 20% or so. Secondly, whereas ACPA titers didn't change the outcomes between sertolizumab pigol and adalimumab, high titer rheumatoid factor in patients with sertolizumab led to less DAS28 CRP and more low disease activity achieving patients. So all this suggests, I mean, this is a post hoc analysis with all the limitations of a post hoc analysis, that this is an important hypothesis that if you have an FC on your monoclonal antibody, rheumatoid factors may interfere with it, and if you don't have an FC, it may not interfere with it. So this is what we learned. Because there were previous hypotheses, this is the confirmation of previous hypotheses in a head-to-head -head trial. But admittedly, this is no final proof. But it's a nice hypothesis which also has some logic behind it. Absolutely. So over 10 years ago, we published the GO-AFTER trial, which was looking at golimumab in patients with rheumatoid arthritis who'd failed another <coughs> biologic agent, and there was lower efficacy. Now, it's interesting that since golimumab has an FC fragment, or an, I'm sorry, an FC chain, uh, perhaps some of the lack of response to golimumab might be due to rheumatoid factor. You're absolutely right, because these were patients with long-standing disease, and patients with long-standing active disease, and they were all active for many, many years, for more than 10 years, they may have the highest status of rheumatoid factor. So you have a very good point there, and one may want to reanalyze some of these data to see if those with lower rheumatoid factor levels might have better responses. A very good suggestion. And in that study, we found that if they had failed two or more biologic agents, they had a much lower response Absolutely. to Absolutely. So perhaps more of those patients were rheumatoid factor positive. So Absolutely. this study that you've presented today suggests that perhaps the second TNF agent that should be prescribed after failure of the first TNF might be sertolizumab pegol in well, rheumatoid factor positive Well, patients. it could be the first. Because if you have high titer rheumatoid factor, overall it appears, again, this is not definitive, it's hypothesis raising, but since the FC free and the FC containing monoclonal antibodies have very similar outcomes, as we showed in the Accelerate trial, patients with high titer rheumatoid factor may have an advantage going straight ahead to an FC free uh, uh, molecule. 
So that's uh, that's a suggestion. So they don't need to wait for a second entity. Sure. Right? They could go right ahead into the first thing. And you know. as a negative control in this study, you showed that ACPA did not affect this. ACPA did not affect this, and also the drug levels were not affected for sertolizumab, but they were affected for adalimumab. So you know, it is a story that is coherent. I like coherent stories. It's not. John, you and I know each other for so long. You have a result that says A, and the next analysis says B, and the third analysis says A again. So what are you doing? Here, the results are coherent, whether you look at drug levels, whether you look at reduction of gas 22, gas 28, whether you look you, of disease activity, whether you look at low disease activity, and whether you look at the non-FC binding autoantibody ACPA. So the totality of results is just gives you a, a, around April that uh, that looks nice from all sides. But as I said, and I repeat this, this is not definitive, this is post hoc analysis, but it is the second time or third time that such hypothesis is suggested and confirmed. So this suggests that a prospective study comparing Sertolizumab Pegol to a, an FC containing other TNF agent would be reasonable and would be would very be helpful. reasonable and you, one might also just go to the registries and take first uh, uh, TNF blocker users uh, matched for, for, for disease activity and, and other important factors and, and then check if one can confirm that. Excellent. So this study suggests that Sertolizumab Pegol, which lacks an FC region, is differentiated not only in that it doesn't cross the placental blood barrier, but also that it might be preferentially uh, surviving in patients with high titer circulating rheumatoid factor. I look forward to more about this and other topics. And from ACR Convergence 2023, I'm Jonathan Kay reporting for Room Now. There will be more on roomnow.com. Thanks. And thanks, Joseph. Thank you.